I don't know about you, but I hate starting a series and then never finishing it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. Today I'm going to go through all of the romance series that I have yet to finish and I'm going to have a companion video to this. It'll be a two-part series, a duology if you will, with all of the fantasy series that I've yet to finish. I wanna do this to just keep myself accountable because I love making lists. Who doesn't love making lists? And I have a bunch of romance series that I've started and I haven't finished and like, for my own sanity, I just love when I finish a series, when it's done, and I can like close that chapter in my life. It could either be that I didn't finish them because all the books weren't out yet, or I just kind of lost interest. Sometimes I bounce around from different things and don't want to read like too many of something like in a row. So let's get to it, and I'm gonna try and work my way through this list when I'm in the mood for romance and get through all of the romance books that I've yet to read. I went through my Goodreads to find which series I have started and have not yet finished, and so this is going to be in chronological order, depending on when I read the first book in the series. The first series that I have yet to finish is the Hot and Hammered series by Tessa Bailey. I love Tessa Bailey, she's probably one of my favorite romance authors. I haven't read too many of her works, but I really want to read more of them because I am obsessed with her. So I read Fix Her Up um, in 2019 actually, and I was absolutely obsessed with it. It's set on Port Jeff on Long Island, which is near where I grew up. So I've actually like been to the town and I know what it's all about. And I followed Georgie, who, whose family owns a construction company. However, she's off doing her own thing, actually being a birthday party clown. And her family really like looks down on her because this is not a serious career, but she just loves being with the kids and making them smile. She is kind of making a plan to have her family take her seriously and part of that plan is getting a serious boyfriend and here we have her childhood best friend travis ford who was a baseball star he's basically had this injury ending career and now he works with her, georgie's family he's just trying to like keep busy and forget that he's kind of like falling into a depression because he can no longer pursue his dream so she proposes a wild scheme that they fake date so that she can impress her family and he can try and get a new job because he will be seen as more serious and not so much as a wild child and then they start to catch feelings and i just like love this because georgie like is literally just like this very sweet cute naive girl and then we have travis who this is the book that made me realize that like dirty talking in books is absolutely amazing i would probably reread this before i read the rest of the series because i loved this one i loved it a lot and i love tessa bailey so yes so now we have these next two books in the series and they all follow different people that are connected to the construction company so in this one, we have Rosie and Dominic Vega, and, and Dominic works for the construction company with Georgie's brother. So they are high school sweethearts that got married, and he is a soldier, ex-soldier. They really become like very complacent in their relationship, and especially like Dominic is he's faithful and a great provider, but like he's just very stoic. They need to like figure out what to do to revive their relationship and they decide to go to relationship rehab. I have never really read a marriage in trouble book. I think it will be interesting to see how it goes. Then this last one, Tools of Engagement. This one is an enemies to lovers, rivals to lovers. Um, so here we follow Bethany Castle, who is Georgie's older sister. Um, and she works for the home flipping company. She's the interior designer and she's a very type A perfectionist type woman. And so a TV producer comes and decides that they are going to film this family's house flipping company. And so Wes Daniels becomes a new guy in town. He comes and works on Bethany's team to like compete with her brother in this TV show. However, he is like a little bit younger than her. He's a cowboy from the South and they clash. And they're basically forced into close quarters because they are in a race to renovate. And things go from there. I love it. Like I, okay, also like the house flipping thing as someone that grew up on HGTV, like I love HGTV. <laughs> I feel like this is really just gonna give me everything that I need. Okay, next we have Thorn Chapel series by Sierra Simone. So this is a four part series um, with Lesson in Thorns, Feast of Sparks, Harvest of Sighs, and Door of Bruises. And this is like a very, um, how do I describe it? 
it's pretty much follows these six characters and their families were bound together in this Thorn Chapel manor and they all like come together and they realize that like some of these rituals that their parents were like involved in were like very like sexual in nature and they start to like take place in the rituals to like help the manor but basically like it's just like a they all do stuff together in like these ritual ways and it was like one of the first romances that I read that was like that and I was like oh my god then I read Feast of Sparks which is the second one and the ending I was like like there were some things going on in there that I was like what and I did not want to continue on with the series however a friend has read it and said that like it does get resolved so I'm willing to pick these back up to see if it's like a satisfying explanation and conclusion because I did like the first two up until that point where it was ruined for me and if you've read the first two at least like you know what I'm talking about then I had also in that time period picked up New Camelot by Sierra Simone which is American Princess American Prince, American King, um, Cards of Love, The Moon, and American Squire. And those last two I think are like spin-offs. So this is about a woman who basically gets involved with the president and the vice president and is a threesome between them, MMF, um, which means that like the men are also involved with each other. And this first book had some scenes in it that I was like, is that actually physically possible when I read it? Apparently it is. Um, so I want to continue on because it was just a good fun time. It's also supposed to have like a spin on King Arthur. So yes, um, Sierra Simone is a romance author that I like pretty much like and would probably like dabble in her other series. I don't know if I would read her priest series, but I would maybe give it a try. I don't know. Like I'm very hesitant about that one um, because of the way I grew up. Okay, anyways, next is the Off Campus series by L. Kennedy. I love this series. We In the first one we follow Hannah and Garrett and we're in Briar University and Hannah is this music student. She's like pretty quiet, um, but she's very book smart and Garrett is like this hockey bro. And basically like he needs Hannah to tutor him and then while she's tutoring him, like he realizes that she has some like hesitancies with being intimate and he like agrees to help her through that and they kind of fake dates so that she can catch the attention of another man um and things go from there and i love the series it follows four different men on the hockey team and then there's also a spin-off series which i have read all of those however the reason this is on the list is because there is a follow-up novella collection that i've yet to read so in the series we have the deal the mistake the score the goal and now the legacy which came out in september and i have not read it yet Next is the Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. Um, this also started with The Duchess Deal, and I just, I loved it so much. This was actually my first historical romance that I've read, and I really have not read many after, and it's definitely a genre I want to explore more, just because I feel like as time goes on, I am tend to read more romance than other genres. So please recommend me your favorite historical romances in the comments. So since his return from war, the Duke of Ashbury has a very short to-do list. He's brooding, he's glowering. He's menacing, but he needs an heir, which means he needs a wife. When Emma Gladstone, a vicar's daughter turned seamstress, shows up in his library wearing a wedding dress, he decides on the spot that she'll do. His terms are simple. They will be husband and wife up by night only, no lights, no kissing, no questions about his battle scars. But Emma is no pushover. She decides if she's going to be married to this man, she needs to know him. They will have dinner together every evening with conversation and unlimited teasing. And like this was just so sweet and adorable i loved it i read the other ones in the series which is the governess game and the wallflower wager and the reason this series is on the list is because we are waiting for the bride bed goodreads said like 2023 or 2024 something like that and i literally panicked i was like what but apparently it's coming a bit sooner than that but like i've been waiting for this last one okay so the next series that i started was sabine valley by katie robert i love katie robert i'm trying to like read all of her books so i started the series it's actually not a completed series but i'm including incomplete series on here this book is like set in the real world but like in a city that like exists outside of the rules of the modern world so like it's a city ruled by factions and basically the cohen brothers um there's seven of them they were like 
taken out of power as one of the three co-factions that rule the city and they like were forced to flee and now all brothers are back and in this ritual they are basically hand fasted each of the brothers is hand fasted to a different bride for a year and like the bride doesn't necessarily have to be like a woman so some of them are hand fasted to men and i think all of these are threesomes menage a trois if you shall so like throuples so i have read abel and that one follows like the lead brother the leader of this and he basically gets hand fasted to the wife of his childhood best friend slash maybe there was some gay pining involved um and they basically end up all like three of them together and the next one is broderick and that one is out and then the rest of the series is not out yet okay interesting in my googling of the names of the brothers which I am not going to name the rest of the brothers because I can't find their names really easily. Apparently, you can get Katie Robert at Target. That's just amazing. Anyways, so just know there's seven brothers, A through through G. I forget all of their names at the moment. I'll be reading them all as they release. The next series is also a Katie Robert series, and that is A Touch of Taboo. And this is her novella series that have to do with taboo things. The first one I read is Your Dad Will Do. And it's about a girl who gets cheated on by her boyfriend and as revenge, she gets with his dad. Like I said, a touch of taboo. What's nice about this series is that they're all novellas. So they're like super quick to get through. Um, the next one is a Christmas novella, I'm pretty sure. So I will probably read it in December and then continue on with the series from there. They're really good if you want just like a quick and dirty read. Can't say that they have much plot, but they have the other things that you come there for, you know? Okay, so next ones in the series are Gifting Me to His Best Friend, which is about a husband gifts his wife to his best friend for Christmas. Um, my Dad's Best Friend, pretty self-explanatory. Um, Seducing My Guardian, also pretty self-explanatory. The Groom, The Maid of Honor, and The Runaway Bride, which is the fifth book in the series. And I don't think... I think this is published yet. It doesn't have a release date on here. And then there will probably be more, but they haven't been announced. The next series that I have to talk about is the Brown Sister Trilogy, and I actually have bought these in paperback. So I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert back in like March, April time, I want to say. And so what happens is Chloe Brown has a chronic illness, and it really limits the way that she lives her daily life and that she's afraid to do a lot of things. But after a near-death experience, she makes a bucket list and decides that she's just going to go out and live her life. She needs a teacher on how to be bad. And she knows just the guy, Red Morgan, the handyman in her building with a tattoos on a motorbike. And he's an artist who paints at night and hides his work in the light of day. Very artistic soul. And it's their story. It was just so cute and heartwarming. I loved it and I loved the other sisters that we got a hint of their personalities in this one. The next book is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. And this is about Danny and she is hard at work getting her PhD. And then there's Zafir who is a security guard and he rescues Danny from a workplace fire drill gone wrong. And they go viral. And because like the internet is shipping them together, they decide to fake a date and ride the clout. Things go from there. Then here we have actor H. Eve Brown. Eve Brown is the youngest of the Brown sisters and she's a certified hot mess. What happens is um, she accidentally breaks the arm of this bed and breakfast owner. And he, you know, is someone that's like always very in control and he always expects perfection. And basically like Eve Brown, shows up like a whirlwind in his life so because she broke his arm she decides to help out at the bed and breakfast it just seems very cute and sweet and like i said i just loved i just love these next is the twisted series by anna huang i have been following along with the series love it so the first one is twisted love and this follows um alex volkov who is like this cold hearted man that is Ava Chen's brother's best friend and when her brother has to go out of town for med school he tasks Alex with looking after Ava and um Ava doesn't really want like the influence of this very icy man there and yet she is able to see 
through the cracks in the ice around his heart and it was just so good i feel like anna wong like really just like throws a bunch of tropes together and makes them work because there were like so many things going on like it was like brother's best friend um a little bit enemies rivals lovers um some like pseudo mob stuff and like a mystery like it was really good and then the follow-up is falling bridget who is in Ava's friend group and she's actually a princess and this follows her journey um, kind of five years after this initial story with her bodyguard her hot bodyguard yes I loved it I need to read more princess bodyguard romances please if you have recommendations let me know because your girl needs them I loved it and then there's going to be two other books in the twisted series that follow the other two friends in their group twisted hate and twisted lies I think the next one is actually coming in January, so I will be picking it up when it comes out. The next series I have to talk about is Filthy Rich Americans by Nikki Sloan. The series was like, wow, like because people talk about the first book and like a scene that occurs in it and it is, it is a scene. It is a scene. Anyways, so we have the initiation, the obsession, the deception are the original trilogy and then there's the redemption which follows the main um, guy's like father and then we are getting the temptation which just came out in October which follows the main guy's brother but in the initiation we are in this like exclusive town right outside of boston with all these rich northeastern families so no one knows how the members are selected to hail bank and holding um board but there is rumors of a sordid rite of initiation whispers of how one woman and nine men disappear into a boardroom and this time that woman will be me So we follow our main character like as she gets engaged to one of the Hale family members and has to help with the initiation and it's like very dark. And then as the story goes on, there's like a very twisted love triangle between our main character, her love, main love interest, and her love interest's father. Which is why the follow-up book about the father is the redemption because he needs to redeem himself. So yeah, I'm very excited to read this shoot-off of the main series and see what's going on with... The brother vance i will say that i want to read more nikki sloan like i heard her like the architect the pool boy like all those i heard that series is really good so i'll probably pick it up at a certain point i need to finish these other series before i start more romance books okay so the next series i have to talk about is the one night series starting with games we play by dana islay The next series I have to talk about is another Katie Roberts series, which is Neon Gods. This is her Dark Olympus series. I loved it. It follows a modern day Olympus where there are 12 like of the gods. Um, so like all of these positions like Zeus, Era, um, Ares, all of that are passed down um, generationally. Um, although I think some of them are voted in like um, Demeter. Persephone's mom is a position that's voted in. Um, and they rule this city. So again, I forgot about this art print, but yes. What happens is that there is an upper Olympus and a lower Olympus and Hades rules lower Olympus. And society darling Persephone Demetrio plans to escape the ultra modern city of Olympus because her mother Demeter arranged for a marriage between her and Zeus. And Zeus's wives are known to disappear so persephone flees to the forbidden undercity and makes a, de a devil's bargain with the man she once believed to be a myth the one and only hades i loved it and this is a traditionally published series by katie robert um, her other books are usually self-published but this is through source books casablanca and so with that like the release sequence is kind of slower so we have the next book electric idol coming in January and this is between Eros and Psyche and then there's a third book that's contracted and I think that she was contracted for like three or four more after that so there is going to be a lot in the series I'm so excited the next one after Electric Idol is Wicked Beauty and this is between Helen of Troy, Achilles, and Patroclus and the other ones that were contracted are not up on Goodreads yet so I don't know their titles or like what couples they involve but I do know that there's like I think up to nine of them and I will be reading them all. The Belger Sisters series, so it started off with It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey, Queen. 
And this is a Schitt's Creek inspired rom-com. So we follow Piper who is an heiress living her best life in LA. Um, but she's like going from party to party, being a socialite. And after she ends up in jail one night, her stepfather is like, enough, you need to like learn something of value in your life and sends Piper and her sister Hannah to this like small town in Washington that is a fisherman's town and this is where her father is from and so her and her sister take over her father's like dilapidated fisherman's bar and try to turn it around and bring the business back to life and here she encounters uh, grumpy fisherman Brandon Taggart who basically is like who is this girl coming into town like messing everything up and uh, it goes from there. It was so good. What I love about Tessa Bailey is that like her books are rom-coms but they tend to be a bit more spicier than like a traditionally published rom-com, you know? So I'm so excited because I just got this in the mail, an arc of the second book. The first, uh, this book is coming out in March and this is Hook, Line, and Sinker and this follows Hannah and Fox. Hannah is Piper's sister and Fox is Brandon's best friend friend and like the chemistry between these two in the first book was popping off and so I'm so excited to read about this one because it is friends to lovers. Fox is a playboy and Fox um, realizes that like he's such a player he doesn't actually have any like real genuine female friendships in his life and so he decides that he is just going to be just friends with Hannah and he is helping her revive her love life. Things go from there. I'm really excited. I love these two in the first one. Very excited for this one. And then to finish this out, the last series that I have to talk about is none other than Ice Planet Barbarians because I think I would have had to be reading nothing but Ice Planet Barbarians since I picked up the first one to even get through all the books, but I am determined to get through them all one day. I actually have like this notebook where I just like write like notes and to-do lists and things like that. Um, and I have my Ice Planet Barbarians reading list in here and it's literally this page. And this page because the spin-off series um, Ice Home is actually also part of the Ice Planet Barbarians universe. Ice Planet Barbarians took TikTok by storm this summer. It is about this group of girls get abducted from Earth and then like left on this ice planet and they meet up with Saki who are the like big blue aliens that live on this planet and they're just a bunch of like himbo aliens and they just like want to take care of their women and they get like these mating bonds and I don't know it's a whole thing it's actually really well done um which is why i've like gotten this far in here i've read up to the short stories after the eighth book and um i do plan on reading all of them i do I, it might take me like a year because there's 37 but they're actually like really quick to read through each one individually so it's not like it would be like reading 37 like ya books or something like that like they are really quick reads and they're all like about 300 pages so I need to find time to get back to Ice Planet Barbarians. I feel like maybe winter would be a good time because it will be icy outside. Okay guys, so let me know in the comments if you have read any of these romance books, if there are any romance series that you yourself need to finish. If you're a person like me that like once you start a series, like you need to finish it unless you're like absolutely DNFing it. But most of the time if I mostly liked a book, I will finish the series. Um, and I'm very excited about all these series that I have laid out here. I actually also have some like romance books on my TBR that are like standalones and stuff like that that I haven't gone to yet that I own physically. Also want to read those, but that's a video for another time. Um, but yeah, just like interact with me. Leave a little sparkly heart down below in the comments if you watch this far. I like just like it warms my heart seeing that you know people are watching my videos and interacting with me even if you don't have anything to say. Um, and that's it. Have some fun. Read some books. I'll catch you guys in the next one.